Greek mythology rages to life in mythic battles pantheon. Become a god and command heroes and monsters in a battle for Olympus at beastsofwar.com. Fight for the Iron Kingdoms as a warcaster. Take control of the mighty jacks, arcane devices and dark sorceries to bring the fight to the War Machine Hub on beastsofwar.com. So, hi everybody, we are here in the cage with Lukash and John, and a challenge has been laid down. So, uh, Lukash, you guys have a new terrain Kickstarter running at the minute for this. Mm -hmm. So what is all this? Well, this is terrain uh, designed to be easy to uh, assemble and uh, to uh, have the whole table uh, ready to play in uh, no time, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it consists mostly of the foam terrain, which is lightweight, durable and pretty cheap to, uh, to pr produce and uh, to obtain. Mm -hmm. uh, some HDF to mask some of the flaws that the foam uh, technology inevitably has some warping or some yes. mismatching. And then uh, the resin uh, ruined versions uh, of the foam stuff uh, with much more detail. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically... What we're seeing is, so, this home building, you guys have now done as a ruined building, yes. yeah? And then these foam buildings, you have also done as ruined buildings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, what is the challenge then? We have you here for a reason, John. Yeah, um, well, essentially, we have two things that we want to do in here. Okay. Um, we know Star Wars Legion's on the way. Yes. So we're thinking of utilizing this terrain as a Star Wars-y sort of setup. Yeah. Now, the idea we had with it was the, the SETI stuff. We were going to paint similar to what we've done previously. Yeah. So it's going to be mostly white with a bit of shading and weathering and stuff like that put yep. on there. Um, the stuff that looks a bit more sort of boxy and standard military-esque. Yeah, a little more industrial. Yeah. I have a feeling we're actually going to take it to white or possibly even... A different color, maybe. Well, well, I'm well, thinking. We'll I'm thinking red. Okay. Because we're looking when you're looking at Star Wars, you know, white and greys are the imperial. Mm. Uh, the rebels are sort of known for having a lot of red through their stuff and like that. Yeah. Um, so we're thinking of that for the sort of Star Warsy sort of look, but we want it to be sort of dual purpose. Okay. Now we obviously know that the static stuff goes really nicely with tar. Yes. Um, the other stuff, we've painted similar buildings like this in the past yeah. for Imperial Guard. But we have enough of that. Yeah. So what we're thinking of is getting a terrain set for our Skitari, our Mechanicus army. Ah, yes. So we're thinking of doing the buildings, the, the big blocky ones, a bit more red. Mm. And that will cover the Rebels for Star Wars, and that will cover Skitari and Mechanicus for 40k. So we'll right. have a terrain set that will do two purposes. Okay, so Imperial Rebel. Yep. Tau Mechanicus. Yes. That's going to make for an interesting table. It is, I think so. Well, guys, it's time to get started. And we, well, we've technically already started because we've already primed everything. So I'll reach across the table here and show you, you know, everything we got has been primed with uh, Army Painter Black. Uh, under the close camera, you can see one of the ruined pieces uh, that's been primed. This is part of one of the Tau Seti pieces. And I have... Somewhere around here, if I pick out some pieces, I have some of the, the more blocky, sort of standard military-esque looking ones, uh, prime black as well. So the whole lot is prime black, ready to zenith. Um, a quick one, guys. If you've never zenithed before, uh, it's one of the most simple and most effective little sort of pre-shade techniques that you can use on your miniatures. And it works a treat every time. You just have to get a little bit of practice with it. Make sure you're using the, the right paints and whatnot. And you just get on with it. I'll show you the, the process in a minute. The paint I'm using is this. Uh, I, can, I still can't read this properly. So many people in the comments have been telling me, you know, the proper spelling of it and the way it's in. It's basically Badger Airbrushes uh, Polyurethane Surface Primer. Uh, specifically thin for airbrush, so you don't have to thin this stuff, you just put it in the airbrush and away you go. In this case though, I've added a couple of drops of thinner anyway, just to make it a bit easier for me. Um, so I'm using that and it's the white one I'm using. Uh, so to Zenith, what we need to do is get our airbrush. In this case, I'm using an Iwata, let me see which one, Iwata Eclipse, the HPCS. So that's the airbrush I'm using. And what we want to do to Zenith, because we're doing a couple of things here, because we're trying to tie in with buildings that we've already done for the tie, we want this to be a majority white 
um, with the shadow being all the recesses and damage and stuff like that, we also are going to avoid all the smaller pieces of rubble because we'll paint those in a different colour just to match in a little bit. So from a top down position is where we start to zenith things. So I'll make sure my airbrush is ready, which it is. And from a top down approach, we then start to apply the white. And that is essentially how you zenith. Note that you get a higher, brighter white up towards the top and it sort of feathers itself out because of the way the airbrush works. And let's just continue around here a little bit. And that is essentially all we're doing is that sort of approach to it. Um, because we have so much stuff going on in these little base parts, if there's anything on the inside of the area, it's basically just to highlight the parts of the building that still have some of their surface colour, which in this case is white. Alright, so that is essentially all I'm going to be doing on the SATI pieces and the ruined pieces. The important thing to note is because I want to do the, the basing a different colour, probably more of a dirt, soily sort of colour, and the, the broken up rubble, it'll probably be another colour as well. I'm not too sure of that yet. Um, that's basically it. Although I could just zenith it all and just say it's all a white stone or a white plastic in this case. I would assume that the tie or whatever, the tie satty in that, would probably use a more sort of polymer based building. You could use that as a piece of narrative or as an excuse just to zenith the whole lot anyway. So that's all I really want to do anything wise on these pieces. I now have to zenith everything else and when I'm done with that we'll come back and check what we need to do next. You know sort of weathering and bits and bobs like that. I'm really looking forward to getting to the ghost tint stage because that's going to be awesome. So after showing how to basically zenith with the uh, the broken down stuff I thought I'd have a look at one of the larger buildings here and you can see this sort of storage tar generator unit or whatever you want to call it and I want to go briefly through the process of or explain the process of how I'm going to go about highlighting it. I've already given it a first pass, a general pass with the white primer just to give it a bit more of a grey tone to it and of course this also picks out the upper details which helps you decide where you're going with your highlighting. Now using the airbrush same as before, make sure it's all ready to go. Um, what this is going to be doing is if you're not going to paint uh, the terrain piece or you just want it to be done very quickly this is a manner you could do now in it this is one way of doing it quickly and then you could probably just add a wash and then have it done with uh, and this will go for using any color you want if there's anything uh, from black to white this will work really well uh, if you're doing like black to say a beige color or something like that it should work just equally as well and what I'm going to be doing here is just picking out areas that I really want to show and focus to bring out the shape of the building and any quirky details like this sort of panelling that's going on here. You want to highlight that a little bit so from a distance when you're looking at the table you can actually see the shape of the building. Now to start off I'm going to work on the top of the tar and we're just going to catch the very edge, very edge of it. You want to keep the feathering pretty even or as even as you can make it. Well, that'll pretty much do it. And then in the center here, we'll just add a little block, uh, dot. Like that. Now, for this sort of paneling, all we're doing is ca trying to catch the top edge of it. Now you can bring this highlighting up as much as you want, you can put it to pure white if you wish but in this case I'm trying to just bring it up a good level above the sort of grey tone that it already has. Uh, so let's just finish this piece off. Alright, other areas that you want to pick out, uh, I'm going to pick out the top of the pipe in here. Don't worry too much about the overspray as it sort of, in this case, sort of helps pick out this sort of curved piece of plating down here. 
And unlike the buildings that you'll have seen me do for the Tau, if you're a backstager you'll have seen that already. If you're not a backstager, go on ahead over and check it out. Uh, you'll get your 7 day free trial over there. Uh, and just see how the Tau buildings went together, they look pretty good. So unlike them, which were majority white, uh, this I'm trying to focus and keep the grey but uh, accentuate the shape. So I'm using the highlighting on a very narrow area. For this sort of frame, we'll probably just hit that all almost entirely. Okay, so that will be a fairly simple approach to that. Now the door down here as well, we're going to try and just focus on the frame of it. Okay, so you can see where I've been hitting on the door. Maybe a little bit more in the corner there, perhaps. Okay, and then for the outer door frame, we obviously want to catch that detail too. Okay, it does look a little rough, but it's not so bad. Now I'm going to go back onto the top of the building here briefly because I want to work on this because it looks a bit like a sort of plated walkway and I want to highlight it out a bit. So along these bigger areas. So essentially that, just to bring them up a little bit and keep the darker areas just exactly the way they are. Run on to the back here. This has almost been highlighted for us already and it will remain in a bit of shadow, but I'm going to add a little bit more to it anyway. So we'll start from the top. That basically covers everything on this type of building. Now obviously the other ones you're going to be looking at and checking out and you'll see in the next piece where I've focused on them in particular. So I think without further ado I'm going to continue on with this, wrap it all up and then we'll see it all on the table. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.